Hello and welcome to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. And uh, we are back again uh, with the penultimate episode of the Green Ring Conspiracy. Uh, this is part 11, for those of you who don't know what penultimate means. Or like how me. many episodes are in the Green Ring Conspiracy. <laughs> both, both are p- potentials, you know. Yeah. Gotta, we, we cast a wide net here. We do. We really There's do. There's so <laughs> many ways you could be dumb. <laughs> We try to predict them all, or at least we do our best. That's what I'm here for, actually, is to cover the widest spectrum of dumb possibilities. Because ah. when you think it can't get any stupider Andrew or more Sabo. stupid, that's that's what I slide in and say, let's see what we can do. I think we yep. can reach that next level. Dylan, what episode are we talking about today? I already said it. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Man, you're really proving this point. I guess I didn't say the number. It's uh, 689. There he is. 689. So the, it's part 11. Which, right. Which then I was like, ah, so it'll finally line up where the last part is 690, <laughs> which is even. Whereas we did the opposite thing. and We've been even the whole way, which I love. Mm-hmm. Very nice. It was completely accidental, but it is very satisfying. I, I couldn't be happier. Um... Is there anything significant in the realm of cast this episode? Um, so we, we, we just have two people showing up. Um, we've got uh, Jess Harnell voicing the auctioneer, Mr. Hubert Guffman. Yep. That's a name. And you it really is a only, name. I mean, and the accent, I mean. He's just there whew. a bit in the background. And yeah. you know what? Uh, Jess Harnell doing a great job. Not recognizable. Mm-hmm. Um, but still a solid performance. As um, professional voice actors do. Yeah, yeah. And then we have uh, Catherine Lynch as the nurse. Um, we've talked about her previously because in part five, she owned the print shop. Uh, classic. She is the one that got hit on by Pole House. Yes. Interesting. And in this episode, she sends Monty to his room. I mean, kind of hot. Moving on. Um, I mean, there's not really anything else off the top here aside from rolling a promo. You cool with that, buddy? Very cool with it. All right. Everyone in Odyssey is spreading out to stop the Green Ring conspiracy. From the hospital... Dirk Beggs is coming out of his coma. I'm going to figure out a way to sneak out of my room and into his. To the carnival. I've been waiting for Mr. Skin to leave so I can rescue you. To wit's end itself. I have to contact Mr. Whitaker right away. Can they stop the Green Ring conspiracy? Join us on the next adventure in Odyssey to find out. This mm, this is a good episode, in my opinion. Interesting. Is that no- I? Do you have different opinions? I did not particularly like this. I can understand why you would feel that way. I like the way that it's building there, but I do have some complaints. I, I'm interested okay. to see how our yeah. notes compare. But that is yeah. what this show is. Right, I'm happy to I'm happy to fight you on this one. Like I think I think it's fun if we if we disagree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's what the viewers are here for. Yeah, it's I, pay, I don't know a pay per view boxing not, match between me it's and not, Dylan. It's not bad, but it's maybe in the bottom half of the green ring ones we've done. Okay, I can I can respect that. Honestly, the wiki I, disagrees. I think it gives it like a ninety seven. It puts it as like you know number four or something but there are some laugh out loud moments and i find it really hard to hate an episode of adventures in odyssey that makes me laugh out loud right it is it it, right it's hard to fight with like the wooten stuff yeah because he's wooten yeah 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 yeah. but so so i will not be fighting with wooten (laughs) well and and (laughs) especially connie's response uh with the captain absolutely drop Oh my word! That, that I mean, I listened to this episode like three times, uh, in preparation for for this podcast, and uh, that made me laugh pretty much all all three times. Maybe oh, maybe not the I'm second glad. time because I was asleep, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you counted as three times, even if you were asleep for one. Well, it's at the very end of the episode, so you know. Yeah, there's no, there's I mean, no accounting for it. I it's mean, it's like the late middle. 
okay late middle of a 25 minute episode i don't know man <laughs> i'm sorry I'm on a lot i of wouldn't have said anything right but you said very end <laughs> under so so we start with connie and penny yes um connie they are going on the hike to this uh point yep Connie is like, oh, wow, this is way more of a height than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. And then um, Penny's like, oh, I used to come up here all the time with Mr. T- you know, with, with Dr. Trask. And Connie's like, just the two of you? And she's like, no, 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 there were, like, other students there. Which is reassuring, <laughs> but, but also oh, it, it I had the same fear. <laughs> I Yeah, no, no, it, it, was, it was my thought exactly. And it's funny, Justin, and I, I think it's a good writing slash performance thing but just in the way that like penny seems like she almost wishes it was just the two of them oh yeah yeah or she like thought about perform- it like it was just the two of them right kind of. yeah yes very much yeah. so oh i came yeah. up here with you know this guy i like and all of his friends that sort of thing <laughs> right. right 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 i i went on a date and and andrew happened to be there it's true yeah. i mean i i'm with you on all of your dates in your heart well, yeah, I mean that's just that's just a good accountability partner. Though. Yeah, exactly. That's where they live. Right. You no, know, we, live just, we right... just have we just have good Christian values. We wouldn't we wouldn't date someone one on one. Oh no no no, 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 no! You gotta you gotta bring it. You gotta bring you know you gotta bring the guys along. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and they sit in between the ch- the chambers of your heart. You know, I mean, they are like rooms, and that's where they hide <laughs> the little men that keep you accountable for all of your sin. Yeah. It's like a circuit judge for the brain. As they're, like, going on this hike then, Penny, like, starts complaining about it. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's then revealed that, like, oh, Penny, like, she's just like, I'd rather go skeet shooting. Like, she didn't want to go on this hike really either. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because Connie's upset. Which is really weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Like, I think it's just for a laugh, but... Is, Which is the is. surprising thing to me about Connie, right? How has she not explored every hiking trail in Odyssey? Like, I feel like if you Andrew, live... Andrew, she does not have friends. I, I don't, I mean, I don't think that you need friends to hike. I think hiking alone is, is very much a thing. Arguably the main thing. Really? I, you can hike with friends, especially as a young person, I think. But I'm surprised, as, like, a good Christian girl that lives in the middle of nowhere, like, this is how she entertains herself. She works, and she goes on hikes on the same trails around Trickle yeah. Lake that she's I don't know. I just... Was, I don't know. I, I'm I, I don't. I don't buy it. You don't buy that Connie's a hiker? Nope. Or could be a hiker? I do not. That's fair. I, I, I recognize that. Maybe she's not as rough and tumble as I as I hope. I mean, like, I would never go on a hike without friends. That is fair. And I totally would. I just yes. thought that that was... I thought that... Well, do you ever go on walks alone? No. We are different people. That is what I'm learning here. Yes. Wow. I did not... Okay. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm not... I Yeah. Doing like I, I I shouldn't say that I I do bike alone so that counts for something. Yeah, but you would probably did you start biking alone or did you start biking with other people and then just picked it up as a hobby? Uh, I mean I biked with like my dad. I I mean I never did that so that's yeah. I feel like that's. But like I used to walk with my parents or well ah. my mom I used to go on walks with my mom all the time. And but my mom would also walk the dogs alone, and like my grandma goes right. for walks alone. I, uh, we're we're the, walking people, right? And also the the pet factor is for sure a thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Where like I don't do the whole pet thing. Yeah, I, I really I don't know. I'm very afraid. I'm at a very fragile point in my life where I feel like I could go either way and just have a lot of them or absolutely none of them. And, you know, remain my general animal-loving feelings, but, like, I'm thinking it's going to be, like, one cat and nothing else, or, like, three cats and two dogs and, you know, well, a turtle. Well, if, if you want one cat, 
You know who I've got cat hookups always. I I have yeah, Chalk Squad. Ask Dylan for a cat. He will mail one to you. Um, <laughs> that's on him to figure out how to do. <laughs> uh, so that, I mean, you've I, heard of I, snail mail, <laughs> cat mail. You've heard of catfish, cat mail. <laughs> there it is. That's the better joke. You've heard of male cats, <laughs> cat mail. <laughs> that's the best joke. <laughs> comedy comes in threes it does it does we we go from this whole like penny doing the like ah ha ha i'd rather be skeet shooting mm-hmm. just like a hard cut to um yeah the auctioneer slash carney jess harnell mm-hmm. um yelling out about you know auctioning stuff off but i'm Archie's. huba guffman and then uh and then wit talking to uh to pole house and pole house is like ah i keep looking for the stiletto and it's like oh yeah that's that's weird let me change topics um yeah let me just what about trickle lake concrete <laughs> and pole house is like i who cares about trickle lake concrete and it's like well it's the only clue we have and pole house is like yeah but like i'd rather just accuse a haggler and that's where the conversation ends <laughs> Yeah, it's a very interesting moment of Wit being human, and, like, he does blow his cover in, like, a very weird, like, just drop the ball randomly kind of way. Oh, uh, I mean, it's better later. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, well, aren't they, is this where he says that it smells like, victory smells like popcorn, or that's, that's the That's the scene. very end. Oh, okay. Victory smells like popcorn's the end. See, th- this time I do say note. very end. Yeah, I, I, I believe you're right. Um, the uh, but then he does get a call from Monty mm-hmm. in this scene, and it's Monty being like, "Hey, you know, Dirk woke up. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, go talk to him." And Wit's like, "No, don't do that. But when you do, talk, you know, ask him about the numbers. And also, the stiletto is." And then he gets cut off. <laughs> Classic. It's so. I'm He's like, gonna what? tell him over the phone who the stiletto is. Right. Great it's like, idea. This is not. This is not to Monty's benefit. If he no. comes up against the stiletto, he's gonna know immediately. Well, and also Rick like, did. he should be in the hospital still. The whole point is Monty should not be doing this. Wit just says, "Don't right. do this," and that's the end of the story. Right. But no, Wit, Wit's like, "Oh, don't do this." But if you're going to. To help me cause problems <laughs> yeah yep and yeah then oh oh this is this is one of the scenes that i don't really like in this episode mm-hmm. um so we have skint leaving to go to the auction and yep. telling buck to stay back because if they're together it's gonna blow his cover yeah because then, buck or skint looks completely different as previously mentioned right right and then Skint walks out, and Katrina stumbles in, mm-hmm. and is like, oh, I tracked you down. I just went to every trailer at the carnival, because you said that Skint worked at the carnival, and I believe that that wasn't a lie. And now let me save you from him. Yeah, yeah, we love white knighting. It's... <sighs> It's yeah. it's a ter- it's a really tough Katrina moment because like I understand what they're trying to do and they're they're trying to manifest the later relationship or like the later plot movement without the personal relationship having been established. Like I understand that Katrina has this very caring bond with Buck, but like Buck has des- expressed zero desire to be saved. Um, and I understand, you know, pressing it once and getting rejected and whatever, but pressing it a second time is really, I don't know. I I understand that she gets her way, but it just doesn't seem respectful of Buck and his, like, his sense of autonomy. I don't know. Like, he's over 14. Legally, he gets to choose. It's, it's this frustrating thing where, like, she's just coming off as though, like, she's, got it all figured out yeah you can choose what is good life is like 
he talks about the what the meaning of life is to survive and she's like oh i suspect you're talking like skint which is one of those great like how did they know about this but of course they knew about this so they can call them on it for plot purposes things right Right. you know it's writing whatever it's my big but my big gripe with this scene is just it's like i get that katrina's heart's in the right place here she's coming about it wrong and there is right that problem of like it feels like they are establishing things in a way that does not really align itself with how they've previously been established. Well, if that makes sense. Yeah, and to be honest with you, Skint seems to respect Buck's like autonomy and and relationship more so than Katrina does. At oh, this absolutely. point, absolutely, because Skint is you know when he comes back around is assuring that like you know Guff or uh, Guff. <laughs> uh buck could always you know leave whenever he wants and and obviously there is some manipulation and there is a hold and there is like definitely a paternal bond like it's not that mr skin is clean but at least he understands that like buck is his own person and is capable of doing what he wants and yeah i wish i could put my finger on why this scene bugs me to the extent that it does but it is just yeah, it is just a really tough scene for me. I don't love the way Katrina handles the whole thing. It seems mm-hmm. foolhardy and plot convenient. Yeah. And forced. Yeah. It seems both like the writers are forcing a thing and the character is forcing a thing mm-hmm. in a way that just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Well, like, and- I don't know what she. I don't know what she thinks she can do here. And I think that she is being portrayed as handling this well. And yeah. that's where my struggle is. If this was Katrina overinvests, blunders in, gets in over her head, and her motives aren't necessarily the purest, then I'm in. But I think it's going to be her motives are pure and she just got in over her head yeah and it's i don't want to it's difficult to say this without like coming off as very heretical but she she does kind of play like a a foil in the sense that like she is to be the foolhardy blindly optimistic sacrifice to expose something about skint to buck so that buck chooses her over skint right that's presumably what's gonna happen i mean i can't remember exactly what happens but i do know that you know buck ends up with katrina spoiler uh for something that came out 10 years ago (laughs) but it it is very yeah i definitely understand that there's there's a certain sense of like i understand what they're trying to do with it but i really am not comfortable with yeah it it feels out of character for katrina and it feels um like out of character in an uncomfortable way like it's almost like cringy in a way no it 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 is yeah it just feels uncomfortable and she feels so socially inept Mm -hmm. in a way that like they've been portraying especially through this arc how good katrina is with people Mm -hmm. which then just makes her ineptitude in this scene that much more frustrating yeah and i think that's that's maybe the the big thing that was that was bothering me well she just seems like we put comes in and sounds a little bit like frantic and crazy and it's tough and then skint doubles back Mm -hmm. and ties her up yep and another thing about this scene it is his line she you know she doesn't have to be a problem she only has to be mound and gagged the way that he says that gagged it's just stuck in my mind forever yep like a hundred percent it is seared in there i heard that it was just like core memory triggered we are Uh uh-huh yep i'm back in the basement and it's 2012 right Right, this is... My yes. parents took away my uh, screen time privileges, and so now I just listen to Odyssey to keep from being sad. 
It's great. It doesn't count as screen time if it's audio. Yep. That's that a is... good loophole, children. Remember that one. Oh, I w- am a religious ab- uh, abuser of that loophole. <laughs> Still? I mean, I don't get my screen time taken away, but I, yeah, I try and life hack my stuff that's monotonous with stuff that's productive <laughs> oh, through audio as hack. much as possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. Um... So, yeah, then we get a scene of Monty confronting Dirk. He's basically just like, hey, Dirk, how's it going? Tell me about those numbers that were on that paper in your phone. And Dirk's like, well, if you saw the phone, it would be self-explanatory. So you're bluffing. And then he's like, well, um, uh, buh, buh. and then the nurse bursts in mm-hmm. and is like, get out of here. And he's like, he's like, you know, the Dirk, watch your back. The stilettos, the stilettos out there town. and Dirk like flips out about the stiletto. And I'm like, it's so funny, not because we know the stiletto's Jason, but because we've seen this, that the stiletto has zero power in this situation. Yeah. He's just got absolutely like they've, maimed, they've, like right, they, emasculated ma- <laughs> yes. immediately. Like they immediately put like Archie, who is like a cartoon of a man. Yeah. Above the stiletto. Yeah. And there's this mysterious Mr. Groat. And mm-hmm. so it's just like the stiletto feels like he's on the bottom of the totem pole. So it's really funny when Dirk, Dirk. like, pees yeah. his pants thinking about the stiletto. But, I mean, it says something about, you know, character development for who is the stiletto outside of the green ring, which we do learn about more in future episodes. So there's that. There you go. People are afraid of him, just not these people. <laughs> yes. Except for Dirk, apparently. Very much so. Then it's uh, research time at the library. Yep. <laughs> our favorite place and our favorite uh, segment on Odyssey is uh, research at the library with two children. And yeah. oftentimes an old man. And sometimes microfiche. <laughs> <laughs> A small fish? Right, like that's that that's 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 uh, yeah, that's what I yeah. gotta assume. They're they're yep. looking through all this stuff on on microfiche, right? Well, that's well, canon. I mean, yeah, that's uh, news. It's all news information, right? Isn't that what right. the microfiche is for? I think so. I don't really remember. I've tried to block out a lot of that. Yeah, it's like a it's like a bad dream kind of. It well, know. I mean, it literally is a bad dream in a couple moments. That is, is it a dream if it's like augmented reality? I'm going to say yes. And uh, don't come at me. I don't have the intelligence to come at you, but I might do some research on it in like my professional career, and then. Oh no! no, no look, look. Okay. I I am a hundred percent wrong, but don't at me. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> as long as we have that understanding. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so so the whole thing they 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 use the 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 earphones mm-hmm. to call. <laughs> Uh, to call Eugene and just relay him information in a way that is dramatic but frustrating. Yeah, um, it it feels like they they act like they're saying a lot, but it's really not that much information. No. So basically, the information is they found out that counterfeit money was showing up in locations. Like, a little bit would show up in Odyssey, and then it would show up everywhere else. And that always coincided with when Uncle Archie's carnival was around. Great. Yep. And also, they talk about the Consolidated Arts Company. Right. And uh, she's like, She's like, let me send you this picture. She's like, but that's not all. Let me send you this picture. She's like, and she starts talking about Trask. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, she, 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 about she talks about Archie. And she's yeah. like, Archie, you know, started this company, Consolidated Arts, with, dun, 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 Dr. Trask. And it's like, yeah, but that name means nothing to either of you. So mm-hmm. why are you making such a big deal about it? That only means something to us as the audience. Yeah. Like, that's a reveal for us. But it should be, you should just be like with some guy named Trask who <laughs> happens to teach art here. And guess what we found out about him? 30 years ago, he was, let me quick send you an email. Eugene goes, oh, Oh. he was, let me cut scenes to him on the phone where he talks to Wit. And he goes, Wit, Trask worked at the U.S. Mint. That was worth three different scenes of exclamation, right? Yeah, totally. And, uh, uh, 
Yeah, okay, I get why you didn't like this episode. It feels very plot convenient. That, that's, I mean, I get it. Like, that's how you're going to get somebody with the experience to do such things and everything, but. It is, it's just, well, so it's a frustrating episode of them. It just feels like they have to move the plot. And they're willing to, like, take some leaps to do it or whatever. Which is fine. It's just, like, it... There was just a couple moments that really got under my skin. And, like... And we'll we'll, we'll see what happens in the next episode. And then in, like, all the aftermath we cover. But just that frustration of... That we knew it was coming. We've talked about in the past. Of just that, like... Okay, so now, like, we make Trask not just full-blown villain, but also kind of, like, man behind the man a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, you know, Stromboli pulling the strings. Yeah. And the problem with that is that then we just get to write off everything he's ever said as, oh, yeah, he was a villain who didn't actually believe any of it. Yeah, it's... it's- it just feels really convenient and l- kind of lazy. I don't know. Yeah, or it just... I wish it had been, like... He could have been bad. It's just, like, I'm it's fine such... with him being involved and being involved yeah. through the Consolidated Arts Company, but there is a third party of, like... Even if Groat was Trask's brother, I'd find that more believable. Like, <laughs> like... It's it... just a frustrating thing where it just... It feels like... Suddenly in the... Haha... <laughs> In the 11th hour. Yep. In the 11th half hour. Like, that it just is all of a sudden like, okay, boom, Trask. This mm-hmm. is all Trask because Trask is, you know, Somebody a false that is mysteriously prophet. Bad. And so <laughs> he is also the villain here. And what did he do before being an art teacher? He, he worked, worked for, for the, the U.S. Government. Mint. Yep. And they... Only know that because it was in a newspaper about new people in town, which honestly sounds like the most Odyssey thing to exist. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I I took note of that when they were talking about it as well, being like, you know, actually, I believe that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. If it's a small town, I'm not surprised that somebody of historic note would get an article written about them. Because, I, I mean, I think that, you know, yeah. Small town's got to write about something. Yeah, and now I was just like, I wonder how classified, like, in reality, U.S. Treasury jobs are. Oh, it probably feels incredibly. Like, <laughs> it feels like we shouldn't just know that a guy, like, worked on the engravings for, you know, currency. <laughs> yeah. That feels like something that should not be in a newspaper. But I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, the only uh, the only solution is to go to the library and find out, Dylan. <laughs> All right, let's meet at the uh, public library and see if we can go through those microfiche. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for making the microfiche joke. I was preparing one in my head, but you beat me to it, and I'm okay with that. That was a long walk for a a reveal that really felt kind of underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but the next scene is um, Eugene telling Wit and Tra- about Trask and all of that. Um, so Trask has the knowledge and the experience to like be the, the headmaster of all of this going down, which we previously discussed is just very underwhelming. Um, yeah, so now Wit basically decides that he's going to tell Connie. I don't know. It's kind of a nothing scene. Yeah, yeah, it... it uh... Yeah, this was also I kind of frustrating. So, like, it's Eugene filling in wit, and then mm-hmm. Eugene's like, you know, um, Connie is currently with Penny, who was, you know, is one of Trask's disciples. So yep. Connie is probably in danger. And I'm yep. like, what just happened here? Yeah. How, how, how did we get here? Yeah. And Well, why? I know you're... Are, are we beginning this by accusing penny is that the is that what's happening that connie's in danger by being with penny i mean that's certainly what it seems like yeah and yeah no that that is definitely what they are implying and (laughs) 
Like what? <laughs> Penny. I don't know. Penny. 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 Like, I can understand maybe at risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Um, at risk of laughing <laughs> so hard that you fall down a hole. Um, maybe a certain, like, a risk of, yeah, like, smile lines. I mean, goodness, crow's feet are inevitable, probably, with the amount of extremity of emotion that, uh, that Penny deals with. I, I... But no, not danger. Why? Why you assume? <laughs> I yeah. Don't get it. I don't yeah, get it. it's it's fine. I guess it's great though. I love that. That's that's how we uh, that's how we draw our conclusions about people is by their associations and not with uh, their actually their the quality of their conduct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For for sure. Nobody. Nobody spoke on that ever not in the bible not in not you know in the 60s not in you know like i don't know maybe a year ago <laughs> this, this, this hasn't been an issue no. for humanity no, no 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 yeah so so then right then we jump back to connie and Penny and Penny's mm-hmm. like, you know, Dr. Trask wants to invest in our company that mm-hmm. we don't have yet. Um, and Connie's like, oh, well, I don't know about having a company. And then, like, they keep walking for a bit. And she she does something I love, which is she she references is like really excited about the view mm-hmm. from like when they were on the hike. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I like that. I like that there's, like, something good came from this trip. We had, like, the... I don't know. It just, for whatever reason, just made me smile. Of, like, oh, oh no, okay. yeah, totally. Well, like, and my... She actually enjoyed herself. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's some basis for relationship with her and Penny, other than, like, it being kind of manipulative, and neither of them really wanted to do it. Um, but... <laughs> I... I'm just surprised that Connie didn't doesn't hike at all around Trickle Lake. I don't know. I I recognize that I'm the only. I mean, one her and Mitch have a way. picnic out by Trickle yeah, Lake. Yeah, I, but you buddy, just, you just it's a that... lake. There's got to be like fun hiking spots you can't go to, and it sounded like they were almost like bouldering. So I mean, at that point, like that's fair. Y- you you know. never know where these hippies want to like, meditate these days. Yeah, you know? th- there are there are. They could be out in. Oh, there are absolutely. plenty of hiking places in my neck of the woods that I have never hiked. That is fair. Even I've... offshoot trails at places I have hiked otherwise that I haven't gone on. True. True, true, true. True, true, true. Me and Kanye are different people. I think this is this is what we're what we're learning yeah. here. And that's why you're made for each other. Yes. I I mean <laughs> I shouldn't have responded so uh, aggressively, Connie. I'm sorry. I would like to group date you. Uh, me and the men in my heart um, would like to take you out to a movie. Um, we can we can sit like two two seats apart if if that's what you want. I mean, it's definitely good for social distancing right now. Uh, but yeah, that would be nice. I'll be sure to wear a sweater. There you go. The mo- it's your move, Connie. <laughs> Please don't leave me. <laughs> so, so then Wit, I can't wait to see how much of that makes it. In. Wit then calls Connie, and is like, Connie, I've got some news. Are you somewhere safe? You cannot react. And Connie's like, Yeah, 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 I'm fine. And then screams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. My favorite Connie trope. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally. I can. I can keep my emotion. What? <laughs> yeah. It's great. So great. Excellent writing. Not frustrating at all. No. Um, then Polehouse and Wit are watching the uh, the show or the, the auction. Mm-hmm. And Polehouse is like, this whole thing's being rigged. The same person hasn't won twice. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, but I've got roadblocks in place. So we're going to get them. Yeah. And he's the money's on overconfident. The trucks and- yep. Which is, is then paid off at the end. So yeah, then uh, then we jump back to Connie and Penny, like racing down mm-hmm. the mountain, and then Wooten jumps out of the bushes. Yep, it's like ah, surprise! <laughs> I, I was gonna, gonna meet you. 
I know. I caught. He's like, oh, I fully forgot. Which poor yeah. Wooten. Yeah. But then. This is a poor Wooten kind of day. I yeah. mean, poor guy just really, really wants to hit it off. Maybe that's why I like Wooten so much. Because I feel like that's a situation that I could get myself into. <laughs> Granted, I would probably have less of an excuse of Wooten in that, like, I might know that that uh, Penny was, like, somewhat associated with something very illegal. But I wouldn't think twice about it. <laughs> anyway, Yikes. Wooten jumps out of the woods. Uh, and, yeah, isn't Connie's... Penny's upset at Connie because Connie won't tell her why she's upset and why they need to go. Um, and so this is when, like, Wooten uh, is trying to, like, bait them to go to Montague Point and she doesn't want to go. Um, and so Connie then decides to tell Penny uh, about what she heard about Dr. Trask. And yep. that is, like, the incendiary thing. They freak out. Um you know trask is she's devastated like because she is really upset because she's betrayed um you know everything that he had kind of made himself out to be is Uh apparently not not the case yep wow there's a lot of deep irony with you know some of the the uh (laughs) the fallout with uh some of the evangelical higher-ups these days (laughs) there's 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 some parallels there that I feel like could definitely be drawn. But, you know, our listeners are smart people. We don't need to do that for them. I guess not. There, There's a great thing where um, Penny's just like, that can't be true after, like, we, you know, cut away and then cut back on, you know, Connie having filled her in. She's like, that can't be true. And Wooten just goes, it could be, but is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was, that was another laugh out loud moment for me. Yeah. It's, but that, is that it? Is, I'll, give, I'll give that line a lot of credit. I do like, I do like Wooten. Yeah. Um, and then Penny's like, all right, we're going to take a shortcut that will lead us to the truth. Mm-hmm. Not suspicious at all. So then, yeah. uh, then we jump back to the trailer where mm-hmm. Buck removes Katrina's gag. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's basically like, Skint doesn't love you, but I do. Yep, and then he puts the gag back on. (laughs) Yeah, I'll pray for you every day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, can appreciate the sentiment, but like, yeah, but it's not my favorite. You you really gotta, you really gotta get it to get it though, and otherwise, it's really not that great. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, God. Yeah, it's 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 mm, again not 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 great for Katrina or my mm-hmm. feelings about her character as a whole. Oh um, uh, yeah. Then we uh, then we have the other big wit blunder. Oh yes, <laughs> where he's like, where Poehouse is like, ah, I was really hoping I'd see the stiletto, and Wit's like, oh yes, I've been looking for him, and I have not seen him, or at least anyone who looks like him. I don't know who the stiletto is. What? <laughs> Stiletto says what? The stiletto is not my son. Why no, would you even suggest not. something like that? <laughs> Wait, I didn't. you didn't say son? Oh, um, never mind. What about Triple Lake Concrete? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we uh, just jump back on the. Wait, is this the? No, nope. That's still later. Oh my word! This freaking episode. Mm. No, wait. That is maybe now. I don't know. There's, the, the, I'm just gonna put it here because I don't know where it is. I think I think it might be here. Is um, pole house just like gloating? Yeah. About like how they're gonna like win victory. here? Yeah. 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 Uh, just setting themselves up so hard for the fall that mm. is to come, because it has to. Well, yes, of course, because it's the penultimate episode. You know. Right. We've got to have something good for the last yeah. one actually in odyssey's case historically this has been the highlight <laughs> yeah i do tend to like the penultimate episodes best or i mean they're well in novacom wasn't it the court case was the penultimate or was that the yes yeah yes, the penultimate episode is the court case yeah now it's awesome i remember really I liking that, that where it's like the super cut with them praying oh man oh yeah. man i should go back and listen to the wad fam shock pod season one or whatever we don't really do seasons 
episodes covering the Novacom. <laughs> yeah. Arc. Be episode 27. <laughs> wow, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Um... So- <laughs> <laughs> how come uh, you know so much about that show <laughs> yeah weird I, I uh yeah i know a guy um so so yeah then then it is uh wooten penny and connie showing up at the old ross compound mm-hmm. where penny's like trask took us here one time on a trip oh i guess yeah. we don't know for sure it's the old ross compound but it totally is yeah it's definitely um, the old ross compound because it's over guess, by trickle lake right i mean it could be trickle lake concrete but i'm pretty sure it's the old ross compound yeah, it's a bunker. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely the old Ross compound. Anyways, they show up. The security guard's like, hey, what are you doing here? And it's the security guard from the old Ross compound in the previous mm-hmm. episode. So I think that really confirms it. But, you know, whatever. You can fight me on that one, Chuck Squad. Um, and so Trask isn't there. But Skint is. Yes, he is. And Penny's like, oh, Hey, I know you. You you had me do the poster. I could never forget your dreamy blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it's it's so funny that she sees through the, the disguise immediately. Oh, yeah. It's, That's just, and it's he's like, uh, what? Uh, what? No, uh, you must have me confused. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, you recognize me. All right. This is a problem. <laughs> yep. And so he has the... Uh, the mound and gagged. Actually, not really gagged because they still eat lunch. <laughs> yep. He takes him to the bunker. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wooten was talking about, uh, he makes a joke about, like, it being fully furnished and spacious or, like, being cramped and full of spiders. And, yep. uh, and... He's the, like, you'll have to see it for yourself. Yeah, the the meat <laughs> says that. <Yep. laughs> I don't know, you'll have to find out. Mm-hmm. Um, um, or you'll find out soon enough, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they're gonna have, uh, Wooten's like, let's, let's have a, let's have our picnic down here. Cause I guess they left him with all the picnic stuff. He's like, mm-hmm. you know, a friend of mine from Alaska had, uh, had something just like this and, uh, there's no way out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they're, uh, so they're let's... incredibly secure and, uh, they were designed by paranoid people. There is yeah. no way out. <laughs> so let's just, let's just have a picnic. And then, mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, they, uh, they're, Penny has seemingly lost her taste for raspberry soda. Yeah, she's very distressed. Pour, and... pour one out for Penny. Yeah. She, she's not she's not at all distressed about, you know, her mentor, you know, turning on her. But Certainly not. That's not emotionally scarring by no. any means. Raspberry um, soda. That's what scars. Yeah. Who raspberry does... soda does scar. I mean, have you ever had raspberry soda? I don't think I don't so. think I have either. I should maybe track it down. Uh, the... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've we'll had a lot that. of different we'll kinds of We'll have a chocolate sodas. soda. We'll have, you a know, peppermint soda. lemonade. Yep. That would be, cool. be great. Great old time. Wooten does, like, a real quick summation that is fun. I'll give him that. And then uh, attempts to summon Captain Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> which is, it's like, this looks like a job for Captain Absolutely. Which, honestly, if it wasn't, like, towards the end of the episode, I would think that they would cut to something like that. Uh, but Connie just immediately cuts him off and is like, no, it's not. And yeah. it's hilarious. I, it's a funny yeah, bit. It's my, yeah, it's my favorite part of the episode. Wow. Uh, Strong, but I, I don't know, man. It got me three times. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say anything else well, other than that. There is there is that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's when, uh, doesn't it cut to Pole House, right? Oh yeah, there's just like a little scene with Pole House where he's like on the radio and uh, mm-hmm. asking Martin, I believe, like if they've gotten the trucks yet. And there's like, well, we're following them, but they will not pull over. Mm-hmm. What? No, they, they they won't pull over. Yeah, just I mean, not at all. This is uh, clearly not suspicious. And no, definitely not a diversion. <laughs> Couldn't be seen through at all. Nope. The the there are boxes in the bunker that are full of money. Mm-hmm. We should uh, we should hammer that home. Yeah. And uh, Penny starts to worry that she's going to go to jail. And mm-hmm. Connie agrees with that concern. And I'm like, Penny has done literally nothing. Yeah, she but is. But Penny's like, Penny's like, they're going to like think I'm a part of this because I know Trask. And Connie's like, oh, yeah, maybe. And I'm like, Connie, bad friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. She's just on the side of Eugene and Witt and everybody else that was concerned about uh, Connie because of Penny. Right. Uh, uh, and yeah. then, uh, yeah, Skint walks in, they start packing up the money, and Trask walks in. Mm-hmm. 
and we get the confrontation between Penny and Trask. And yep. you know, oh, there there is an incredible like they 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 start talking about how nice that like lookout point was, mm-hmm. and is it is it Trask who says it? It's the uh, can we get off the point and get back to the point? Oh, <laughs> which is a great line. Hey, I'm here for it. I didn't remember that one. Oh yes. Who who says it? Is it like one of the like I, minions? I no I no I think Trask says it but just like quiet. Oh. Like I don't think he he doesn't say it as like a joke. Okay. Or in like fair. a jokey tone. Get off the point and get back to the point. Very important. Yes. Um yeah, then, so Penny asks, oh, like, yes. kind of how, you know, how could you do all this and say all these things and not actually back it up? Right. What, what good like, is well, all this nice talk if you don't live it? Yeah, exactly, which is the the theological point that they're trying to make. And and right. to be honest with you, I, I wholeheartedly agree. That's um, a good point. That is an I excellent point. Yep. I don't like how that that is enacted in this episode by uh, just not. Uh, irrationally judging people ju- based on association. <laughs> Yeah, but like I yes, but I do no, I do appreciate that as as a yeah. point. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And Penny was definitely very betrayed by Trask, and like it makes sense for her to be asking all these questions. And it's kind of nice that she gets to have this conversation with him. Yeah, um, yeah, where because he's just she, like you know, I'm just I, a bad person, right? I, I, I'm behind I, yes. it all, and I'm gonna be a millionaire, and, right? Yes, you know, I, I, you know <laughs> all all of what you're saying sounds great, except I'm gonna have a million dollars, so you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't like, need morality. I've yeah. got money, <laughs> which is also not great. No. I mean, glad glad that that's a, that's their stance on money. Yeah, fair. Then why isn't the OA club free, huh? <laughs> Yes, yes, that's the problem here. Yep, that that's what I'm coming for. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it should be free, but it could be less than it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. Disney Plus is like five bucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's eight, but you know. Is it eight? Yeah. It might be seven. I forget. It was six when it launched. I think it's gone up since then, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, so. Yeah. Anyway. And then, um, and then, uh, and then we end on a... Oh, this is when they say that they'll be moved. Um, Right. They're like, ah, we're, we'll, you know, they'll, they'll stop you on the roads or whatever. And he's like, roads where we're going, we don't need roads. Exactly. End credits. Yep. (laughs) With the back to the future joke. It, I mean, yeah, I wish it literally was that. That would make me very happy. It's right there, but he's basically just like, oh no, we're not. You, you think, you think we need roads or whatever? And I'm just like that. It's so close, and it's the roll credits of the episode, so why not? Like, and the credits roll right after Just throw that, so a Hail not? Mary, man. Yeah. It's the last joke. Come on now. But, yeah. Oh, well. But. We yeah. cannot have That's our the episode. I, I don't hate this episode. No. It is just, it is all plot, and the stuff that isn't plot, I mostly found frustrating. Like, I think the plot is good. Some of the interrelational stuff I don't love. Mm-hmm. mainly that Katrina, the kind of wit Connie stuff and the Katrina um, Buck stuff just both rubbed me the wrong way. And yeah. so it kind of compounded into me not loving this episode. But it's not bad. It keeps the plot moving. It's setting up a good finale. And I'm excited to talk about that next week. Me too. And honestly, I with the way that it ends, I mean, there's a lot to be concluded in the next 25 minutes. Um, yeah, it's. I believe the final episode is like a full half hour. Oh, is it? Okay. I think it's a thirty minute, but I could be wrong. I hope so. I mean, 30, 30 minutes seems like roughly the bare minimum amount of time to wrap uh, up what we've got going on here in an adequate sense. It is sort. thirty minutes ten seconds. There it is. All right. Perfect. Yep. But and then obviously we have twelve aftermath episodes that we're covering. Yeah. So, so we'll be halfway to be next forward week. to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's it's also cool because we'll get to follow the you know the through character lines of yeah. you know characters that were introduced in this series as well as kind of relationships that were incited because of it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Come along with us on the ride. Hopefully, New Odyssey we don't not like. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Do you have anything um, to plug, Dylan? 
Well, so we, we, I've got I've got two things of sorts. Okay. One, we have two new T-shirt designs uh, from friend of the pod, Michaela Moeller. Um, we have a Trickle Lake Parking Pass T-shirt, which okay. is very cool. Um, yeah, she did a great job earlier that. in this season. And then the shirt that I have always needed and will likely purchase, the Power Boy symbol for help. Really? It looks great. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. She showed me that. She didn't show me all of it. Oh, that's epic. That is It's beautiful. got like a nice weathered look to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, oh, I personally, I might be picking it up on like the purple heather tee. I think that's kind of the one I've landed on. It's a very um, Dylan shade of purple. And this just say. feels like the right. Yeah. yeah, feels like the right the right one for me to own. Well, and it's not it's, technically your own merch, you know. It has it's not my own merch. Book. It was created by a person who I know and like, yeah. and it is not at all a reference to our show, which I think is a huge win. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm very okay with that. I think um, that this is above the uh, the cringe of bands wearing their own merch on stage. There we go. That 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 is my one goal in life is to be above that cringe. So. I, I mean, you gotta have some standards. So. Otherwise you just end up like Trask. Yeah. Anyway, check out our merch. Yeah. So 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 go buy the merch. The link buy is yourself in the description. Some buttons, decorate your backpacks for school kids, you know. Yeah. Just do it the, up. Oh, the buttons are so cool. The also, buttons are great. Honestly, they, they're... it's summer, get yourself a tank top, show yeah. off those show off those biceps yeah you know? sun's out guns out um or you know <laughs> don't say don't that unironically please no no please don't please don't be a part of the problem here at the wad fam chalk pod we're we are really trying to to put an end to uh sun's out guns out culture yes um, yeah we're coming for that's, you that's that's our mission yeah um support us on patreon to further that goal um we don't need patreon we have power boy Buy our shirts to help us forward that goal. There you go. And uh, just, yeah, if you are tighter on money, Mm -hmm. uh, I do not know when this episode will come out, but uh, Tee Public has sales frequently. Basically, anytime there is a holiday or an excuse for a sale, there will be one. So just, like, keep an eye on it. Yeah, and they put good deals out on, like, like they're not, like, typically you can get, like, a T-shirt for, like, 13 bucks. Yeah, you know, plus shipping, which is a really good deal, especially for a quality shirt. I've, you know, I've ordered stuff from Teach Public before, and uh, it's very comfortable. It lasts very long. The one shirt that I got, I still wear to this day, and the other shirt I stained, so I can't wear anymore. So, yeah. Rip. That is a full endorsement from me for Teach Public merch. Um, And then, uh, aside from uh, buying our merch, which you guys absolutely should do... If you are interested in my takes, or Andrew's takes, on other pop culture, uh, and do not mind reading rather than hearing things, uh, follow me and or Andrew on Letterboxd. I write little blurbs about the movies I watch, and also, you can just see what movies I watch. Andrew leaves star ratings. I have abandoned the star rating because it stresses me out, but you know... I still write something basically every time I watch a movie. It's a good uh, yin and yang. You can see it. You might even see movies that Andrew and I watch together. Yeah, we do that frequently. I mean, it's summertime. You know, I'm not going to lie. My letterbox does get pretty dry uh, during the school year. But right now, I am currently uh, on bed rest uh, for surgery. And I'm just cranking through the movies and the TV shows. So, yeah, be sure to check it out there if you at all care about what uh movies i watch and what i think of them if you don't that is fine live your life yeah and uh either way folks live your life and we will be back next week for the final episode of the green ring conspiracy album not the saga the album uh part 12 episode 690 in a week bye guys bye Wadfam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Linux Podcast Co-op. 
follow the podcast at wadfamchockpod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchockpod at gmail.com. The Green Ring Conspiracy Part 11 was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sager and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wadfam Chockpod.